Greetings, Earth enthusiasts. If you ever wondered about the incredible perspectives our planet has to offer from high above you in the right place. I am Dr. Clark Putsi, and I'm thrilled to be your guide on this captivating journey into the world of remote sensing. Welcome. And please remember to like, subscribe to, and share this video. Thank you. In the previous tutorial, video tutorial, we explored um, the different band combinations and the order they are or the structure they are uh, in terms of the visualization of um, the band set images. And uh, remember our starting uh, combination is always the true color combination, which is for band sets five and seven, three, two, one, and for band sets eight and nine, four, three, two. So we always start from the true color, and then we start exploring different combinations and the order of those or the structure of those combinations, each giving us a different visualization of the, the image. Um, and using those visualizations, we can then highlight certain features or diminish certain features, which is obviously the, the features that we are interested in our research or our analysis. So we can use um, the combinations, as I said, to um, display uh, visually the images uh, differently. But they are different. There are also the option of creating uh, indices or different images um, using the different bands within the Landsat um, uh, data sets. So this is going to be the focus of this particular video tutorial, and that is to do um, basic mathematics or algebra within the Earth engine in order to develop indices, which we then can display, again, to highlight or diminish certain features. So, for example, um, if we want to identify, let's say, areas where there's high vegetation compared to low vegetation, or where there's vegetation uh, uh, degeneration or vegetation improvement, we can use what we call the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, NDVI, which is a very common uh, index in um, remote sensing. Um, so we can, can generate the NDVI, we can generate the normalized difference built uh, index, and, and then subtracting the two, we can, we can develop a built up index, for example. There's many other indices that we can develop by doing um, uh, the, uh, basic mathematics on, on the different band combinations. Okay, so again, we go to our trusted engine. We go to our scripts, we find our project, we click on the project, and there we go. Okay, here's our script for our Landsat uh, project. Okay, I'm not going to go through all these once again. It's available in the previous tutorial, but that's basically the script to display um, our standard. If I just um, unselect the indices, remember we have uh, Landsat fi uh, 5, then lens at seven, lens at eight, and lens at nine. There's our standard images that we've created and we've added to our maps or we've added to our layers. Okay, and remember again, very importantly, I've just arbitrarily um, selected those um, time periods, which is basically stretching the whole um, span of that specific uh, Landsat data set or Landsat um, satellite. Okay, so, um, and as I said, um, we showed that using the median uh, is by far the optimum statistic in terms of um, generating a single image from the image collection. Okay, so, all good so far. Let's continue. So, the first thing that I want to do is we're going to create three indices. Um, we're going to create the NDVI index. index which stands for Normalized Different Vegetation Index. If you are interested in the ins and outs, uh, more content around the NDVI, go and Google search it. There's lots of articles. So that's one um, index we're going to create. Then we're going to create what we call the Normalized Difference Built-Up Index. Okay, so when NDVI highlights uh, vegetation state, the state of vegetation, uh, the NDVI um, supposed to identify man-made or urban structures or highlight those those structures, meaning areas where there's urban uh, footprint versus uh, non-urban footprint, 
and then the built up index which is just a um, adaptation of the NDBI so um, it's supposed to give a better indication of uh, urban uh, footprint than the NDBI okay so these two are supposed to give you the same results okay so the first thing that I want to do is create a color scheme for each of those three indices okay so remember all three indices as with all the other indices you can create or most of it I'm not say all of them most of it will have a minimum value of minus one and a positive value of one okay so where one in all three cases is the is in the NDVI case it is the area with the most uh, vegetation and most healthiest vegetation cover and NDVI is an areas where it's the most or the maximum um, urban footprint or urban structure same with this one okay so all the indices because they are what we call normalized okay they're all normalized okay this one is norm not normalized but it's derived from the two normalized so by definition also normalized has a value uh, range between minus one and one with minus one being uh, the extreme on the one side and uh, one being the extreme on the other side okay so I'm creating a, uh, a name for each one okay um, and again that's discretionary that's up to you that's your discretion you're welcome to use whatever name is it the minimum maximum I would leave as minus one and one and then my I created a color palette um, and um, you are free to again change the color schemes um, for you to find the optimal color scheme for your specific purpose um, in this case the color is from white till uh, green so you can go and look for this code but it's basically white to green I'll show you now and this is from white to red and this is from white red and green basically um, but I'll show you now how I got to the colors okay so now I've created the color scheme for each of those indices now we need to go and generate the indices okay so there is my NDVI let me just um, make it a bit uh, open up so it's a bit more um, uh, clear for you Okay, so I'm giving it the NDVI for Landsat 5. So I'm creating an index for each of the Landsat uh, data sets, meaning I'm going to create four indices for um, per uh, uh, four indices um, per um, index or per variable, which is four for the NDVI, four for the NDVI, and four for the uh, built up index based on the four Landsat data sets. Okay, so if you um, now the NDVI formula the NDVI formula is basically um, let's quickly go okay so let me go back so it's all of these indices are a formula okay they are a, a mathematical formula whereby you subtract two bands divide by and then you add two bands so that's basically the the, the, the nuts and the bolts so the two bands that we're going to subtract is band, and for Landsat 5 is a band 4 and band 3 and then we're going to divide that subtraction that value that we've subtracted we're going to divide by adding the two bands together okay so most of them are very similar so first of all we have the sub, we subtract band 4 and by band 5 then we divide that value by the addition of band 4 and band three that creates you the NDVI now to understand what these bands are let's go to our data set and we're going to go to the Landsat landing page we go to our Landsat 5 we go to our surface reflectance tier 1 and we go to our bands remember what is our formula it's 4 minus 3 divide by 4 plus 3 so what is band 4 band 4 is a near infrared okay so I'm going to take my near infrared band and I'm going to subtract it by band 3 which is my red band okay so I take my near infrared band and I subtract it by my red infrared band and then I divide it by adding my um, 
uh, infrared band with my red band. Okay, so that is what um, how to calculate the NDVI. You take band four, which is your near infrared, you subtract it by the red band, you get a value, then you divide that value by adding uh, the near infrared with the red band. And that is what you do um, with Landsat 5. Now we do exactly the same for Landsat 7. Remember the Landsat 5 and Landsat 7 bands are exactly the same. Remember I'm using my the image, the Landsat image, the composite image, the image that I'm displayed here, remember? So that's a median image. So this is a, the, the NDVI will be based on median Landsat image for that specific period. So the NDVI is a median image, not a mean or a, a sum image. Although you can play around with that, that's up to you. If you're not interested in a median, you can change it to any of the other statistics. But yeah, so just bear that in mind that this NDVI is created by using a median image um, for that specific Landsat um, data set. Okay. So Landsat 7, exactly the same. Um, near infrared um, minus the, the red band divided by the infrared plus the red band. Now, again, as I said previously, remember then from 7 to 8, the band numbers have changed. When Landsat 8 and 9, the near infrared is not band 4, but actually band 5. And the red band is not band 3, but band for just to confirm, I go to data. So let's go. To, yeah, let's go to data set. Let's go to our Landsat uh, ribbon. Let's go to our Landsat 8 landing page. Um, surface reflectors uh, tier one, and you'll see there band five is the near infrared, and band four is the red. Okay, so it's band five, band four. I subtract. And then I divide that subtraction by the addition of band 5 and 4. And I do the same for 9. <clears throat> so I've created now a, NDV, a median NDVI for each of the Landsat data sets um, based on this mathematical calculation using the near infrared bands and the red bands. Okay, and now I'm going to display those um, images or those layers. Okay, using my visual parameters that I've just created up top. Okay, so there's my visual parameters that I'm going to use for my NDV, and I give them each a name. Okay, so let's quickly go and have a look and see how that looks. So I'm going to unselect my Landsat ones, and I'm going to select my uh, NDVI values. Okay, there they are, all have loaded. As I said, they are in greens. Okay. So areas where um, there's dark greens will have higher biomass or healthy vegetation, uh, whereas areas that have low NDV values or meaning closer to white will have either no vegetation or very low um, vegetation cover or very uh, unhealthy vegetation. Okay, and again, unfortunately, it's not very clear uh, in terms of um, looking at it from this angle simply because of the size of the region of interest. Um, but so um, you actually need to drill down. Um, let's see if we can visually see differences. Nope, we can't really see visually different. But remember, it will be so minute that, as I said, from this high angle, you won't see the differences. Okay. And by the way, just to get to the color scheme, if I go to my nut here, you'll see my color scheme. There I've created my palette. Okay. And to get the codes of these ones, you just simply click on any of these colors. That will give you the code. And you simply just copy and paste that code into your script. Okay. You can see the um, hashtag A3F9, hashtag A3F9, which is that color green, which is that one there. So I've used this visualization um, um, uh, window um, to create my um, color scheme. And then um, I just copy and paste those um, uh, codes into my script. Or other way, I just import it. 
Okay, so don't stress about this code in terms of the codes and where I find the codes, etc., etc. You can leave them empty. You run it, and then you go to your image, and you simply use this option, this parameter, visualization parameter window, to create your color palette. Okay, you press import. Let me press that. So I imported it now, and then you'll see if I open it, there is your colors. And I just copy and paste it back into the script. Simple as that. Easy peasy. Nothing to, to be concerned of. Okay. And you can do it with all the color schemes. Okay. So there's my NDVI um, um, indices that I've created using my um, Landset uh, data sets. Landset 5, there's the NDVI for 5. Landset 7, there's the NDVI for Landset 7. And Landset 8, there's the NDVI for Landset 8. And Landsat 9, and there's its NDVI. As I said, you can play around with the color schemes to either make the greens more standing out or um, make the, uh, the, the areas of low vegetation standing out. You can play around with your color schemes. Okay, if by interest you want to reverse these colors, you can just basically type in reverse. Okay, and what will happen now is it will um, where one positive one will be this value, it will now reverse it so that negative one will be this value. Okay, so uh, if you don't want to manually rearrange this uh, in a different order, you can simply just type in dot reverse and in your brackets, and now it will basically make minus one the, the, the dark green and positive one the white. It will just reverse it, but that's counter to um, what we're interested in. Okay, so that is how we're going to create the NDVI. And as I said, um, we can now, if we want to inspect it, so let's say we're going to use our inspector option and let's click any specific area on this map. Let's say this area, mini, mini, well, let's say that specific area. Okay, remember it's going to give you the pixel values, the Landsat 5, 7, 8, and 9 band values for that specific pixel as indicated here. We've done that in the previous videos, and then it's going to give us the NDVI values. There's my four NDVI values. The NDVI value for Landsat 5, which is 0 0.16. The NDVI for Landsat 7, which is 0 0.17. The NDVI for Landsat 8, which is 0 0.21. And the Landsat uh, NDVI for Landsat 9, which is 0 0.25. Now, importantly, um, or relevantly, you can see that the changes are so minute that Visualizing it from this distance or for this size is is impossible. You're not going to see this difference in the image. Um, looking at looking at those images from this distance, it's just not going to work. So you really have to zoom in into the specific area to see that the, to visually I look at the differences. But yeah, nonetheless, you can see that specific area that we've highlighted have seen a marked improvement in its NDVI value. Over the period, it's still very low, meaning um, not uh, a really an area of either very low um, uh, uh, vegetation base or very bad vegetation state, or very good or very high vegetation base or very vegetation state. It's sort of a neutral. Yeah, this vegetation is neither bad nor either they're good. Um, and you can read about the interpretation of these, but what it does say, it says, been an improvement in the state of vegetation, either vegetation base or the vegetation uh, health over this particular period um, that I'm looking. And again, just want to emphasize, this is why it's again important to make sure that your time frames are, um, you know, um, uh, selected so that there's no overlaps. Because as soon as there's overlaps, then you basically uh, measure the same thing just using different data sets. So again, um, it's uh, for my time frames it does show, but as I said, my time frames are not ideal because ideally you want no overlaps here so that you generate f images for uh, in 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 uh, you know that's unique. In this case, my images are not unique because of the overlaps. Anyway. Nonetheless, it does show you. Let's have a look at a different location. Let's look at somewhere here looks like a high with uh, NDVI 
area because it's um, dark greens. And let's see if I've selected. Uh, yeah, you can see there. Um, NDVI for five, seven, eight, and nine. You can see it's much higher and it has improved. Let's look at it. I'm just going to see if I can click on an area that's where there maybe is urban settlements, but that's very difficult. Let's click on that specific area and see what um, the values are there. Um, okay, let's see. Now, um, in this case, you can see that, uh, where is it now? Let's go there and hide the in DVI values a little bit. Okay, so in this case, you can see an area which have experienced a decrease in NDVI from five to seven, and then have, I've seen an ink sharp increase from from the period of Lancet seven to the period of Lancet eight, and then again a decrease from yeah, and another increase. Okay, so that's quite interesting as well. Remember, it could be uh, rain related or a change in the vegetation type whatever the case might be so it's not necessarily that you know um that the 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 the, the vegetation base increase it could also be that the base changed um but yeah it gives you a good indication now again what we can do is we can generate a histogram of those ndvi values for each um uh, lancet uh, data sets so that is entirely possible and um, yeah, so I'm going to uh, conclude for in this video tutorial on, on, in, on the NDVI. And then in the next tutorial, we'll basically look at the histograms and we'll also then continue with our two remaining um, uh, uh, indices, which is a normalized difference build up index and just the build up index. And we're going to follow the same. Um, uh, 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 methodology by creating um, mathematical expressions or mathematical equations. We're going to create those, we're going to add them, etc. etc. Okay, so let's just, okay, let's maybe just see if I can, uh, as parting, see if we can um, zoom in a little bit, see if these layers will actually load. That's a problem by using this size is that the layers do take a bit of time to, to load. Okay, so it's slowly but surely happening. As I said, um, it's important here really to, to, you know, to play around with your visualization parameters so that um, the images stand, stand out a little bit more, your feature stands out a little bit more. Um, by the way, I prefer um, to use or to do this in uh, a QGIS. Generate the images in, in Earth Engine, which is what Earth Engine, I think, is designed to do. So generate the, in the, in the, the, the images, but then I would export the images um, to QGIS and do most of this work in QGIS simply because of the, 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 the time it takes to load it and it's much easier in QGIS to do visualizations, etc. But unless, okay, so let's have a look here. You can see this image is uh, the Lancet 5 image. And you can see there's the urban area. You can see the urban area is uh, generally more white. Remember, that was our mine. That was our railway. That is the town of Grinnenberg lying there. So you can see areas where it's more white will have a lower. And we're going to quickly just, let's quick, if we press on this mine area here, let's quickly have a look and see on its NDVI value. Uh, Let's have a look. There we go. You see the NDVI is very, is very, very low. 0 0.07, 0 0.07, 0 0.13, a um, little bit of increase, and then 0 0.19. So, but you can see it's still very, very low. So that is the mine. Uh, and you can see areas where there's high bit. Remember, this is the golf course here, um, which should have a much higher, let's see. It's obviously problematic to get your... Um, location perfectly because it's still quite far off. You can see there much higher on the golf course almost uh, yeah, indicates very high vegetation cover, vegetation base and, and vegetation state. And you can see the difference. Now again one could arbitrarily say that areas with identify areas with low NDVI and areas where NDVI has decreased 
and say that's our typical urban areas. Um, but it could also be areas where there's a big drought or natural, there's just very little vegetation. Again, this idea of sandy, uh, um, um, low um, vegetation cover areas are very similar to urban areas in terms of its spectral uh, footprint. Um, see, the others haven't really loaded as yet. Yeah, so there is, yeah, no, they haven't loaded as yet. So let's conclude for now. But you get the idea is that if you zoom in, you can actually um, visually, um, you know, interpret the NDVI image, and that helps a lot, obviously. Okay, so let's um, conclude for this video tutorial with um, the visualization of the NDVI. I said, please go and read up on the NDVI so that you understand um, why we're using that band combinations in the index. Um, and what the NDVI measures and how it measures that. Um, yeah, the greenness in the leaves, the chlorophyll levels, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I'm not going to go into all those details. So, yeah, thanks for joining me for this um, 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 uh, session in uh, our remote sensing adventure. Um, thanks for being on this journey with me. Um, the journey is still long. It's going to take us to very interesting places. Stay, uh, stay tuned, and I'll see you on the next one.